Okay, guys, welcome. Today we're going to talk about how to multiply polynomials. Okay, so if you haven't viewed the video on how to add polynomials, you might want to do that first uh, because we're going to need that uh, when we multiply. Okay, so when you multiply polynomials, essentially what you need to do is you need to multiply each term in one polynomial by all the terms in the other polynomial. Okay, now once you do that, you're gonna have a whole mess of terms to deal with, and you're just gonna combine like terms at that point. Okay, so we're essentially gonna do this with the distributive property. So let's look at an example. Now these first four are nice because I only need to do sort of one multiplication here. Well, one set of multiplications, I really should say. Right, because all I need to do is I need, just need to take this negative three x to the third and multiply it by each of these three terms here. Right, so the first one I'll write out sort of in slow motion, and then hopefully that will allow you to see what's going on in the next three. Right, so in slow motion, what's happening is I'm going to have negative three x to the third times two x to the third. Right, and then I'm adding that to negative three x to the third times negative six x squared. And then I'm adding that to negative three x to the third times five. All right, so I'm multiplying that three x to the third by each of the terms that are in that second polynomial, that thing in the parentheses. Well, now of course you're just multiplying two terms together, right? So in each case, you're just multiplying the number out front together to get a new number. So in this case, negative three times two is a negative six. And then your x terms, x to the third and x to the third, we get, we're gonna get x to the six. Let me just do that for all of these multiplications. So in the next one, negative three times negative six is an 18, and x to the third times x squared will give me of x to the fifth. And then in the next one, I would have plus negative 15, but I'm gonna write that as minus 15 x to the third. Okay, let's look at part B. So part B through D we'll do a little quicker. So here we have minus x squared y times x to the third minus four x y squared plus six y to the third. Now in each of these cases, um, my number out front is negative one. So I'm gonna have, of course, negative times positive in the first one, that would become a negative. And I'm gonna get x to the fifth times y, right? Because I can only add the x terms together and y is sort of just along for the ride in that one. Now in the next one, negative x times negative four, sorry, negative x squared, I should just say negative times negative four is plus four. Then x squared times x is x to the third, and y times y squared is y to the third. All right, and then finally I'm gonna get a negative six x squared y to the fourth. Okay, so that's that one. All right, in part C, same deal. I have a two x squared times a one half x squared minus three x minus four. All right, this one I'll actually color code. So in the first distribution, we have two x squared times one half times x. Well, the two and the one half are gonna cancel and I'm just gonna be left with x to the fourth. In the next one, I have two times negative three, so that's minus six and then x squared times x is x to the third. And then two x squared times minus four is minus eight x squared. Oh, I said I would color code it. Let's, let's finish the job. Okay, so let's pick another color here. How about orange? So in the last one, we have a two x squared times negative four, so that will give me a negative eight x squared. Right. Now, of course, in all of these examples, you should be combining like terms once you multiply, but so far we haven't run into that yet. Okay, and then finally part D, we have a negative xy 
times x squared minus 2x squared y minus 3xy squared. Okay, so if we distribute here, first term we'll get a negative x to the third times y, right? We're just adding those exponents. In the next one, negative times negative will give me a plus 2x to the third y squared. And then the last one, I will get a plus 3x squared y to the third. And of course, can't combine like terms on any of these. Okay, so that's sort of this most simple scenario. All right, so let's look at some examples now where you're not just multiplying one term by a polynomial, but you're multiplying more than one term by a polynomial. So in part A, we have 3x minus 2 times x plus 4. All right. So what we're doing here is I need to take this 3x and multiply it by each of these two terms. And if I do that, that will give me a 3x. I'll write this one out in slow motion again. 3x times x plus 3x times 4. And then I also need to do the same thing with the negative two. So I'm gonna get plus negative two times x plus negative two times four. And now we'll simplify each of these. So this one would give me a three x squared. This one would give me a 12 x. This one will give me a minus two x. And this one would give me a minus eight. Right. Well, now we can combine like terms because these two middle terms can be combined. So they're going to combine and give me a 10x. And of course, the 3x squared and the minus 8 will just come along for the ride. All right. So that won't give me a 3x squared plus 10x minus 8. Okay. Now in part B, we have a 2x minus 3 times negative 4x squared plus x plus 5. Okay, so same deal. I want to do the 2x times each of these terms. And if I do that, I'm going to get a negative 8x to the third plus 2x squared and then plus 10x. Now on the next one, if I do negative 3 times each of these, I'm going to get a negative 3 times negative 4 will be a positive 12x squared. A negative 3 times an x will be a negative 3x. And a negative 3 times a 5 will be a negative 15. Okay, now you might have noticed that in this one, I did not write everything next to each other, right? And I've also sort of done it in a way where each of my like terms are sort of together, right? I have my x squared terms here, and I have my x terms here, and those are my like terms, right? So this is sometimes a convenient way to write this so it's easy to see how to combine like terms, right? So now we just read right off, we get negative x to the third. If I add these two, I'm gonna get 14x squared, then I'm gonna get a seven x and a minus 15. All right, so that's my part B. Okay, part C, we have 3x minus 1 times x minus 3. And of course, here I'm going to get a 3x squared minus 9x minus x and a plus 3. And of course, when I combine, I'm going to combine those two middle terms and I'll get minus 10x plus 3 here. Okay, and of course, last but not least, we have x squared plus two times x squared minus three x plus one. Okay, so now if we distribute again, first I wanna do x squared times each of these, and that will give me an x to the fourth minus three x to the third plus x squared. And then distributing the two to each of these, 
I'm going to get a 2x squared minus 6x plus 2. So in this case, the only thing that I combine are the x squared terms, and we get x to the fourth minus 3x to the third plus 3x squared minus 6x plus 2. Okay, so that's part D. So those are some examples of multiplying polynomials. Okay, now let's do one more. So we're going to multiply using the long, all the long multiplication form is, is just exactly what we've been doing. So here, if I distribute the 2x to each of these, I'm going to get a negative 8x to the third plus 2x squared plus 10x. And then if I distribute my negative 3, I'm going to get a plus 12x squared. I'm going to get a minus 3x, and I'm going to get a minus 15. So, of course, when we combine like terms, we get a negative 8x to the third plus 14x squared plus 7x minus 15. Okay, so that's that example. Now, one thing that you might have recognized is when we multiply, um, I think we did a couple of these. In example, a and C, we multiplied two binomials together, all right, which means that we're multiplying two polynomials that each have two terms together, right? And one thing that you may remember from uh, when you learned this in high school is that you can think of this as the FOIL method, right? So if you want to mu multiply two things that are like A plus B times C plus D, well, you can use the FOIL method, right? F would stand for the first two terms. If you multiply the two first terms in each polynomial, you get A times C, right? And then you have the outside terms, which are the outside terms on this expression, so you get A times D. For I, we want to multiply the two inside terms, and that's, of course, B times C and then L for the last terms would be B and D, all right? And then of course you would add all them together, combine like terms like we did before. Okay, so let's look at doing a couple more of these with the FOIL method now, all right? So in part A, multiplying the two first terms, I'll do this in slow motion again. So we have X times two X. Then my two outside terms are X and three, my inside terms are negative one and two x, and then my last terms are negative one and three. So now if we simplify, we get a two x squared plus three x minus two x minus three. And of, and of course we can combine these middle two terms to get an x, so our final answer is two x squared plus x minus three. Okay, part B, if I do FOIL here, and I'll do it a little quicker this time, I'm going to get 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared. And then my outside terms are 2x times minus 2, so minus 4x. 2 times 2x is a plus 4x. And then 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. So in this case, the middle terms actually cancel, and we get 4x squared minus 4. Okay, moving on to part C, if we FOIL here, we get an X times X, which is an X squared, X times one, which is plus X, two times X, which is two X, and two times one, which is two. So of course, again, we can combine the middle two terms here and we'll get X squared plus three X plus two. Okay, and then finally in part D, we have a 2x minus 3 times 3x minus 2. So if we FOIL here, we'll get a 6x squared minus 4x 
minus 9x plus 6. And of course, again, combining the two middle terms will give us our final answer of 6x squared minus 13x plus 6. Okay. So one thing that you may recognize is that when you multiply two polynomials together, the degree of that product is just the sum of the degrees that you had before, right? So for example, each of these factors here were degree one. And when we multiplied together, the result was degree two. And that's because if we add those degrees, we get two. All right, so that's one thing that's interesting to note. Okay, now the last thing that we're gonna talk about is uh, some special forms, right? So now these are going to be uh, more crucial uh, when we talk about factoring, but they're still nice shortcuts to know, okay? So if you have something being squared, right, you have a binomial being squared, you can say that that's x squared plus two times xy plus y squared, whatever your x and y are, right? Um, and then of course, if you have uh, a difference of two things being squared, that will just change that middle term to a minus. And then if you have the same first term, the same second term, but one's plus, one's minus, you get a first term squared minus the second term squared, okay? Now again, like I said, it's not crucial that you sort of have these memorized, um, at least for now, it's gonna be important when we talk about factoring, right? And what I mean by that is, let's just look at part A for a second. And let's pretend for a second that you didn't know the special form. Well, x plus two squared is just x plus two times x plus two. And now you just FOIL it. So you get x squared plus two x plus two x plus four, which once you combine is x squared plus four x plus four. Okay, now if you do remember the special formula, this says square the first thing multiply each of the terms by two for the second term, and then square the last term. But if you simplify that out, you of course are gonna get x squared plus four x plus four, all right? So it's a nice shortcut to know. So similarly in part B, I'll, I'll use all the shortcuts this time, right? So this would be an x squared. Now it's minus in the middle, so I need a minus two times x times three and then plus three squared, All right? So this will give me an x squared minus six x plus nine. All right, part C, you have an x plus four times an x minus four. And of course, this is your difference of two squares because you have the same first term, same second term. So this is x squared minus four squared, which is 16. Okay, part D, we have an x minus four squared, so that's an x squared minus two times the product of these x and four, and then plus four squared. So when all is finished, we'll get an x squared minus eight x plus 16. Okay, part E, we have an x plus one squared, so this is an x squared plus two times x times one plus one squared. So we get x squared plus two x plus one. Okay, last but not least, part F, we have a two x plus three times a two x minus three. And again, here's where we have same first term, same second term, one's plus, one's minus, oops. So then we're gonna do two x squared minus three squared. So we're gonna get a four X squared minus nine. Okay, I think, yep, that's it. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this video on multiplying polynomials um, and I will see you next time.